From this house in Vienna 80 years ago, Viktor Frankl was taken to Auschwitz. For 10 years, his book Man's Search for Meaning had been standing on my shelf, but the topic of concentration camps seemed too far away from me. All things must come in their own time. Just a few weeks ago, after having watched the sensational Korean TV show Squid Game quite serendipitously, I opened the book and all the dots got connected. The topic of concentration camps didn't seem too distant anymore. Only Frankl's account of real events in the camps leaves Squid Game pale in comparison. Squid Game does seem like a children's game compared with horrific acts of real people in our real history. Just off Taberstrasse, in Vienna's second district, there is a small curvy side street, Cherningasse, where Viktor Frankl grew up. Already at the age of 15, he gave a lecture on the meaning of life. This was in 1920. In 1925, he already started exploring the connection between psychology and philosophy, and the concept of meaning had germinated in him well before his experience in the concentration camp. I can only assume that his philosophy prepared him for huge trials later in life and was later reinforced and developed by his experience in the camp. If you walk from the other side of Cherningasse, you will notice that this little street was very rich in history. Composer Brahms and the psychologist Adler used to live on the same street. The memorial plaque on the house of his birthplace reads, he was born in 1905 and lived here till 1942. He was 37 years old. From here he was deported to the concentration camp. It is worth mentioning that in 1940 he obtained an immigration visa to America, but decided to let it expire, not wanting to desert his old parents. He had the opportunity to escape the Nazis, to avoid the concentration camps, to leave Austria and be safe. But he made a conscious choice not to leave his elderly parents alone. His values, the meaning of life, was more important for him than his own life. His philosophy was not an academic exercise, but his way of living. From this very house, not just him, but all his family was deported from Vienna to concentration camps. His wife and both of his parents. In front of the house, in the pavement, there are really small plugs, but when I saw them, I felt like those 80 years don't exist. This place witnessed 1942 and saw these real people at their real age taken from this real place to the real concentration camps and gas chambers. Frankel's wife Matilde was 24 when she was deported and murdered within two years in Bergen-Belsen when she was 26. Frankl's mother was 65 when she was deported and later murdered. Frankl's father was 81 when he was taken to the Theresienstadt concentration camp, where he died of exhaustion within a year. The real atrocities in our history trump any imaginary plot just by virtue of them being real. After the war, from 1946 until 1997, for 50 years, Viktor Frankl lived in this house on Marianengasse 1 in the 9th district. I'm going up to apartment 15 where currently Viktor Frankl's museum is located. It must be much more than a museum though. According to the museum's description, and I'm quoting, it's an inspirational museum. 
in which visitors are gradually introduced to the art of psychotherapy. In the course of learning about the development of a genius, visitors also gain insight into their own opportunities and personal potential. It's definitely worth discovering. Moreover, it's an educational center of logotherapy that offers courses for curious amateurs, like myself, I must say, on Frankl's original body of thought. And me personally, I'm becoming more and more interested in this school of thought because it's grounded in philosophy, real life, directed into the future, is rational and logical. Frankl's methods of healing are unique and groundbreaking and deserve a more detailed study. Dr. Frankl was not particularly interested in self-promotion and his genius method of logotherapy for some reason has not become as ubiquitous and popular as other schools of psychology. But interestingly, his book Man's Search for Meaning, according to one American poll, was number nine in the top 10 books that had changed people's life the most. To illustrate the genius simplicity, clarity and profoundness of his thinking, I will retell and quote Frankl's explanation when he is asked what the meaning of life is. So to the question, what is the meaning of life, he says, it is like asking what is the best move in chess. You cannot answer this question in general terms, because the meaning of life differs from man to man, from day to day, from hour to hour. What matters, therefore, is not the meaning of life in general, but rather the specific meaning of a person's life at a given moment. One should not search for an abstract meaning of life. As each situation in life represents a challenge to man, and presents a problem for him to solve. Here comes the most incisive idea for me. Man should not ask what the meaning of his life is, but rather he must recognize that it is he who is asked. In a word, each man is questioned by life, and he can only answer to life by answering for his own life. Viktor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning.